The earliest records show that people have always lived at the point where the River Fleet joins the Thames. The Romans in AD 43 chose this place, the lowest possible, to build a bridge. They called the city Londinium. With trade, the city grew, and although only one square mile in area, it became the financial and commercial center of the United Kingdom and Stirling area. Few of the city's old buildings have survived the Great Fire and Blitz. Where new buildings have arisen, only the names remain. The gates of the old walled city. Here fish was sold. Here milk. And here were the bakeries. Like the place names, many traditions and customs remain. These traditions pivot around the Guild Hall and livery companies, the direct successors to the 11th century craft guilds formed originally for religious and social purposes. Later, their union became more for the protection of their trade from foreign competition to ensure the supply of raw materials and to maintain standards of workmanship. Today, there are 84 livery companies being the direct successors to old craft guilds still maintaining the ideals of brotherhood, charity, and good workmanship. Many companies like the goldsmiths, the skinners, and fishmongers still have a great interest in maintaining the high standards of their trades. The senior company, the Mercers, was formed in the reign of Henry II. And apart from a few formed in recent years, the last company to be formed was the fan makers in 1709. On April the 19th, 1709, the worshipful company of fan makers received their charter from Queen Anne, there being 266 people employed in the fan trade at that time. Today, the company is still governed by its court, consisting of the master, two wardens and 20 assistants, its clerk and a beadle in attendance. To the right of the master sits the free warden, and to his left, the foreign warden. Their duties were to ensure the availability of raw materials needed by the trade, and to prevent importations of foreign fans. The Fan Makers Hall, the hall of St. Bartholdt's Church in the city of London. Members of the livery meet regularly and still elect the master and two wardens on St. Thomas's Day, as do all the livery companies. The church, dating back to before the Norman Conquest, was rebuilt in 1729. After the election service, the guests of the company and the choir from the Central Foundation Girls' School are entertained in the hall. The company, having no hall of their own, used to meet in taverns of the city and halls belonging to other companies. But in 1952, the fan makers were accorded certain rights to use this hall, previously a school and civil defense center. The opening of the hall was a memorable day for the city. The procession was led by the fan makers beetle, followed by the Lord Mayor's sword and mace bearers, the Lord and Lady Maris, Sir Leslie and Lady Boyce, the Bishop of Wilston, and the master of the company, Mr. Leslie Ross Collins, escorting the Duchess of Gloucester, an honorary freewoman of the company, who graciously opened the hall. The company decorated the inside with panelling over 200 years old. A fitting hall for the court meetings and banquets held there. Thank you.
the master is one of the company's most treasured possessions, the royal presentation fan, autographed by royalty on the special occasions when the company has presented them with a fan, including the late Princess Royal, an honorary free woman of the company, Victoria, Elizabeth, Mary, our present queen, and Princess Margaret. A visitor to the hall cannot help but notice the strong link with Queen Anne, her portrait, the door from her carriage, this silver gilt ewer and rose water bowl, this quill and ink stand used by the master today, his badge of office, and these gilt goblets used by him and the wardens on official occasions. The poor box, the symbol of charity for which all the city livery companies are world famous. Like these treasures, the steps outside the hall and many other improvements were gifts by members of the company. Beside the fan maker's crest proudly hang those of the 56th Signal Regiment and the 79th City of London WRAC Regiment, both adopted by the company. The shield of HMS Anson, the battleship jointly built by all the livery companies. The company has, of course, a fine collection of fans. It was the 16th century circumnavigators who brought to Europe the folding fan. One of the first records in this country is shown in this portrait of Queen Elizabeth holding a fan with a leaf of silk embroidered with silver flowers. The art of European fan painting appears to have originated in France. Such fans as this souvenir of the marriage of Louis XIV became the vogue at court. The oval shape of the earlier hand screens can be seen copied in the oval compositions painted on mid-17th century fans, surrounded by flowered borders to fill in the remainder of the fan shape. The subjects often referred to events that caught in mythological disguise and have parallels in the paintings which decorated the royal apartments. The Duchesse de Valier appears as Diana, but with fashionable blonde corkscrew ringlets framing her face. She is strewing flowers over the sleeping form of Endymion, her lover, painted as the young French king in classical clothes, but with a fashionable 17th century coiffure. The back of this fan imitates in paint the silver thread embroidery of the earlier non-pictorial fans. The fan painters created a strange miniature world where ladies could comb their hair in exotic flower-strewn boudoirs, half open to sunlit gardens and inhabited by pet monkeys. The Italian comedians dance, unheeding of their exile from Paris for staging an impersonation of Madame de Maintenon. By the end of the 17th century, the fan was an essential part of dress. The manufacture of fans had become an elaborate industry practiced in most of the European countries. In France, love was pictured as a lottery where Cupid sold tickets to the land of marital bliss. In Holland, Cupid became a hard-working plowboy. In England, a nation of shopkeepers pictured Cupid's weighing out hearts before awarding them to suitably matched couples. While in Germany, Cupids were given a more belligerent role as they bombarded a city with hearts. During the early years of the 18th century, the formality of the early fan painters began to soften, and such elaborate scenes as carnivals, this one on ice, were brilliantly and minutely painted and mounted on equally colorful sticks. Such fans could cost unlimited sums, and the greatest painters were employed on them. Watteau himself painted this sophisticated fan leaf of the Italian comedians, which for some reason was never mounted on sticks. The curved shape of the paper suggests that it was prepared for actual use, and we must be thankful that we can enjoy this painting without the intervention of the folds of a finished fan.
The final effect for which Watteau's work was intended can be seen in a complete fan of the same period. Around the edge, a painted border was added after the leaf was mounted on the sticks and sometimes itself contained small scenes of courtship. As time advanced, the sticks became more elaborately pierced and carved into bas reliefs and the painting became relatively smaller. This is a marriage fan made as a souvenir of an actual marriage, but painted with the marriage of Perseus and Ariadne. Let us examine an example of the fully developed mid-18th century Rococo fan. A dozen specialist craftsmen collaborated to produce this composition. The painters produced a stereotyped marriage fan scene showing the young couple dressed as a shepherd and shepherdess, united by a cupid, with one witness on the left, and another on the right and a dog to symbolize faithfulness. The painting, both in brushwork and coloring, followed the style of Boucher and was carried out in gouache on kid skin. A floral and gilt edging was added around the leaf and the sticks of mother of pearl carved in bas relief were gilded with very colored gold leaf and applied with translucent sheets of mother of pearl behind the carvings. The whole was completed by a jeweled rivet. Occasionally the mother of pearl escaped from the sticks to invade the leaf. On the left, the goddess of justice weighs the relative merits of the fan and the sword. Evidently, the fan is considered superior because on the right, the god of love issues the ladies with fans. Even then, you couldn't get a man with a gun, but some Italian ladies were evidently not so sure. English fans were often more restrained in coloring than their French counterparts. Each of these portraits is of a reigning beauty of the period, whose likeness appeared in popular prints of about 1760. From Kitty Fisher and Fanny Moray on the left, to George Bellamy and Peg Woffington on the right. As the 18th century advanced, fan making became more elaborate, and sumptuous effects were obtained by painting on satin embroidered in gold thread and sewn with sequins. Madame du Barret sacrificed on the altar of friendship, and Marie Antoinette, whose friendship she sought, is shown newly married to the future Louis XVI at an altar of love. The sticks of tortoiseshell are equally rich, being carved and gilt in vari-colored gold and contain portraits which are sometimes actual miniatures of the royal family. By 1775, the painting, though rich, had shrunk to smaller dimensions than the sticks below, and the makers evolved the Spanish stick, with large spaces between the carvings forming an essential part of the effect. The fancy dress worn by the figures in the roundels shows that this fan was made for use at a masquerade. In the decade before the French Revolution, richness was coupled with a more formal neoclassic composition. In the central panel of this fan leaf, Beaumarchais can be seen giving a private reading of the marriage of Figaro in a composition by Laurence, and at either side are small blue roundels with the initials of the owner and donor, which show the fan was a present to the queen. A more restrained style evolved in England became the fashion in France during the Terror, but a royalist sympathizer could carry a fan which concealed within its folds the king's portrait and the legend, Vive le Roi. The Industrial Revolution in England, as surely as the political revolution in France, killed the fan as a work of art. The machine age saw the triumph of the printed fan leaf mounted on machine-made sticks, though at first an engraved tomb could still conceal a ghost of the ancient regime.
man, in addition to being a thing of beauty, has another use. A nicely brought up lady could tell a man exactly what she thought of him without actually speaking. Held in the left hand in front of the face means, I am desirous of an acquaintance. While twirling in the right hand means, I love another. Open in the left hand means, Come and talk to me. Drawing across the cheek means, I love you. Resting on the right cheek means, Yes. Twirling in the left hand means, We are being watched. This needs no explanation. Though fans have not been made in England for a long time, the art and mystery of the craft is still maintained in Spain today. Today, the fan is usually electrically driven. In 1939, the fan makers allied themselves with the modern mechanical fan. The fan that is the basis of the ventilating and air conditioning industry, a 200 million pound a year industry represented by this Olympia exhibition. Wherever people gather, either for work or entertainment, artificial ventilation is needed to maintain a fresh atmosphere and comfortable conditions at the right temperature. Executives don't have to worry about ventilation here, surgeons here, or members here. The fan has made possible the 250 miles of London's underground railways and underground car parks like this one holding a thousand cars. Mining is an industry dependent on the fan for the supply of cool, fresh air and the removal of explosive gases.
A new development in mining is pneumatic stowage. Lumps of waste rock are blown down piping at up to one and a half tons per minute to fill in old workings. This makes surface tips unnecessary and at the same time stops subsidence. Most industries have to use fans for other purposes in addition to ventilation. Here, industrial waste, in this case wood chips, is removed from the working area by suction and bagged up elsewhere. In this paint shop, spray dust and poisonous solvent fumes are washed out of the air by being sucked through this wall of water. The air enters the spray shop through these filters so that the freshly painted surface is dust free. One of the fan makers companies links with the modern industry is through the National College of Fan Engineering where they annually award a prize to the best student. The college is equipped with an anechoic chamber for research into noise in ventilating systems. With the aid of this pneumatic conveyance equipment, students can study particles being moved in air streams great distances at high speed. The research here is for the Ministry of Health into the ventilation of a hospital wall. In this laboratory with its own air conditioning plant for controlled experimental conditions, measurements of air flow are made about the bed. Air containing spore particles enters through this ventilator and in a strong beam of light shining across the head of the bed, the path of the particles can be traced. Other measurements are made on the anemometer and infrared gas analyzer, the information being recorded for analysis later. In another laboratory, the ventilation of a power station is being studied for the central electricity generating board. Into a tank of water containing a Perspex model of the power station, aluminium particles are poured. The flow can then be observed. Thermocouples all over the model record the temperatures in different places at different times. Data taking only a few hours to record might take months to analyze. The Fan Makers Company give a scholarship award in connection with wind tunnel research. Not only are wind tunnels used for the development of aircraft, but also in the design of many buildings and bridges. The Tacoma Bridge in America had a design fault and collapsed a few months after completion in a wind of only 35 miles per hour. To make sure that this sort of thing does not happen again, the building research station at Watford uses a wind tunnel as a basic research tool. This experiment is in fact to study effect of smoke from these chimneys on this office block. The fan has many domestic applications. Removing steam from the family's laundry. Removing steam from cooking. Removing steam from washing up. Removing cooking smells. Removing smoke from kitchen accidents. A fan is the center of the vacuum cleaner. This one, supported on a cushion of air, has many uses about the house. The lady's hair dryer, with its several uses. And the blower heater rapidly replacing radiant heaters. The mechanical fan is used in ventilation, pneumatic conveyance, the handling of solids as if they were liquids, and even has its place in modern transport, the hovercraft being supported on a fan-maintained cushion of air. Although the worshipful company of fan makers takes an active interest in the modern fan industry, it is still proud of its association with the ladies' fan. Each year, the master's first duty on election is to go to the mansion house and present the Lady Marys with a fan. This year, the Lord Mayor, Sir Robert Bellinger, said in a letter to the company, 
May I venture to hope that the revival of my lady's fan may be at hand. A lead from the fashion trade might help to recreate this old charming custom so that the fan can once again be regarded not only as an article of beauty and dignity, but worthy to be included among the many other items of my lady's ensemble. Of all things beautiful in nature, may I ask you, to a man, can there be anything more charming than my lady with her fan?